I never imagined my mother would be that harsh to me. As a result of what had just happened, I was sitting by myself in the dark. My mother does not adore me. That Nora notion kept recurring in my thoughts. I'm not sure how I got this way. Growing up, it was just me and my mother. My father had died and my mother had to raise me on her own. But her attitude changed when I started high school. To put it simply, my mother became a total nightmare. I didn't seem to be able to do anything right with her. Our household was run like a dictatorship. So there I sat, alone in the chilly dark cellar, lit only by a weak floor lamp, sobbing uncontrollably. I yelled and pleaded with my mother to let me out, but she disregarded me totally. I tried several times to wipe away my tears, go on and put myself back together, but it was futile. To get her attention, I began throwing and shattering anything in my path. However, she did not bother. I felt absolutely abandoned at the time. My mother, on the other hand, is completely preoccupied with my grades. They had to be at the top of the class or I'd be punished. Even a Caleb was insufficient for her, which, by the way, landed me in jail for four weeks once. It felt like I was in prison, but the breaking point came when my grades for the current semester were released. My mother was enraged by how low they were. She raged at me for what seemed like hours about how disappointed she was in me. You'd assume that Dylan and Ely covering the page would be the source of this righteous rage, right? No, she was enraged because she saw a hunter. Do you believe it? I couldn't do it. I couldn't let it go this time. We went back and forth, shrieking at the top of our lungs, until the house started shaking. We basically ignored each other for the next few days, like two strangers. I assumed she'd just move on from our dispute, but my mother took it a step further. When I got home from school and walked up to my room, I was surprised to discover that my belongings had gone missing. Was she evicting me from the house? When I spotted her, she abruptly rose from her seat and motioned for me to follow her to the basement. I was perplexed, but I did as she asked. My mother had transferred all of my belongings into the basement, me in the eyes and replied, well, if you want your space, you've got it now. She then returned up the stairs and shut the basement door. I yelled at her, she can't be serious, but she simply ignored me. The basement was dark and cold. Except for the floor lamp I had, there was no light. To be honest, that didn't spark much interest in me. I couldn't believe how mean she was. Who would do something like that? That's when I started freaking out. I wanted to slam the door in her face, but she had locked it. I screamed but received no response. I lay on the chilly floor for hours, crying and praying she'd have mercy in her heart. However, she never unlocked the door. Can you believe how dreadful she is? Hours had passed and I had slept off at some point. I didn't know what time it was when I awoke, but I could see light coming through the small basement window. Was it already morning? The basement wasn't that dark anymore. I looked around and the space didn't appear to be all that horrible. There was more space in the basement than in my own room. There was also a fridge, TV, and Xbox in here. I quickly made myself at home and began to organize the space to make it cozier. Two hours later, I heard my mother open the basement door and yell, time to go to school. She's got to be kidding. I hurried up the stairs and said, okay, mom. When she let go of the door key, I swiftly grabbed it and shut the door. I also secured it from the inside. Mom, I'm not leaving the basement. This is exactly what you asked for. I yelled. Mom, of course, began yelling from behind the closed door, threatening to ground me for life if I didn't leave the basement. I chose to ignore her, just as she had done the day before, and even turned up loud music. I stayed in the basement for the next few days, and with my newfound freedom, I could do whatever I pleased. I stayed in front of the TV for hours, ate all the sweets I wanted, and didn't even go to school. The nicest part was that mom wasn't on my case about every small grade, so I didn't have to worry about any more schoolwork. Two days later, I decided to go to school, so I woke up early, locked the basement door behind me and left. Simple as that. But then the bubble burst. It started with my cell phone. When I attempted to make a phone call, it informed me that I had run out of minutes and shut me off. I had no idea what was going on, so I went to ask my mother. She informed me that she had reduced my plan to the bare minimum of coverage. I was furious, but because I didn't want her to see it, I just let it go. I mean, I still had my laptop. The hits, however, did not end there. My grades came next. My grades had plummeted as a result of spending so much time in the basement. When I got my report card, I found a long list of Eli and some Dylan. 
My grades had never been that low before. It got so terrible that the next day I was summoned to the principal's office. She informed me that my grades had deteriorated to the point where I would have to repeat the grade the following year. I was heartbroken. My only hope was to devote the majority of my time to studying for makeup tests over the next few weeks. I hoped that my friends would assist me with my homework, but most of them refused to assist a slacker. Okay, so my Pauls not accepting my decisions meant they weren't my friends anymore. Even when I tried to explain my concerns and how I needed assistance with my studies, they scoffed. As a result, my life began to unravel. My high success level at school was slipping away, and my social life had all but vanished. I cuddled up on my bed in the basement, chilly and alone, sobbing uncontrollably. I had no idea what to do or who to blame. So I did the only thing I could think of. I blamed my mother. My issues seemed to have begun when she ordered me down to the basement. It might not have been fair to her, but I didn't care at the time. After deciding where to focus my blame, I entirely ignored my mother for the next few days. I didn't say anything to her when I saw her around the house, and I didn't pick up when she called. As far as I was concerned, I was content to pretend she didn't exist. I was summoned to the principal's office again about a week later. I assumed they were interested in discussing my grades, but I was mistaken. My mother had apparently asked them to send me to counseling since I was having problems. My world was shattered. I was furious at how she had done this behind my back. When school was finally finished, I resolved that when I came home to my mother, I was going to let everything out, but she wasn't there when I arrived home. What happened to her? Furthermore, the basement door was damaged. What the hell is going on? I promptly unblocked her from my contacts list and dialed her number. I was curious as to what was going on. My mother then informed me that there had been an accident and that she had been brought to the hospital. Oh my goodness, getting to the hospital didn't even occur to me. When I arrived, I went straight to my mother. She appeared exhausted, with dried tears streaming down her cheeks. Just gazing at her made me feel my heart break. When she saw me enter the room, she smiled and welcomed me in. I sat on the bed beside her and gripped her hand tightly. It was strange. It felt like a nightmare, or more accurately, a nightmare. My mother reached up with her free hand and wiped the tears from my eyes that I had no idea were falling. Before I could even inquire what was wrong, she tenderly shook her head and informed me. She suffered a nervous breakdown not long ago after being diagnosed with a mental disorder. She had severe OCD and was exhibiting symptoms of borderline personality disorder. She was embarrassed and didn't know how to tell me. She had a panic attack at home today, destroying the cellar door and injuring herself. I saw my mother lying there, holding back tears as she stared up at me. I didn't care about everything that had happened between us before. All I wanted to know was if she was all right. I didn't want to be without her. I reflected on everything that had happened to me after she had given me my space, and I realized how bad everything had turned out for me now that she was no longer in my life. My friends weren't really my pals, my grades were dropping to the point of no return and life felt gloomy in general. I can't deny that we had our difficulties, but I love my mother and wanted her to be well. Things have changed between us since then. We began counseling to heal our relationship and improve communication between the two of us. And I'm pleased to report that it's functioning.